Thanks for joining us for this video. We wanted to actually show you how to put the Granberg Chainsaw Alaskan Chainsaw Mill together. And so we kind of did a test run yesterday just so we could kind of get the bugs worked out and then uh, hopefully we can get the assembly down to the, uh, the real basics uh, for you here today. So really quick, what's in the box and what's not in the box? Of course, you're not gonna get a chainsaw and there is no chainsaw bar included with the sawmill kit. Uh, however, when you order the sawmill, you will need to order separately the thickness rails that go with the sawmill. Uh, these are completely uh, relative to the size of your saw and the, and the size of the bar. The sawmill itself is kind of a unit, but then you can adjust the length of the, of the sawmill by ordering different thickness rails. Ours are 36 inch, we have a 36 inch bar and we've got a pretty big saw. If you have a smaller saw and or a smaller bar, you'll wanna order probably shorter uh, thickness rails. That said, the, the longer the thickness rails, you can always come shorter with the sawmill. But if you have a set of short thickness rails, you obviously cannot go longer. So keep that in mind when you order your thickness rails with your sawmill kit. All the hardware is included. Basic tool is included, which is a bar wrench, a standard screwdriver, and a couple of different sockets. But it's not enough to put the kit together. You're going to need probably a ratchet wrench with a half inch deep socket. That's going to be better. If you have just a shallow socket, that will get the job done. And then preferably a 3 8 inch socket wrench also. And uh, these bar wrenches should be enough to put the entire kit together. Um, you don't need much more. So again, a half inch socket, 3 8 inch socket. If you have a 3 8 inch wrench, that's not a bad thing too. And then the bar wrench, which is included with the sawmill. One other thing that is not included with the chainsaw mill itself is ripping chain. It's very important to get the most efficiency out of your sawmill that you use ripping chain. There are alternatives, but I would encourage you to at least discuss ripping chain from Granberg with Granberg because the ripping chain is very unique. It's not just a regular crosscut chain that's been filed differently. Okay, so uh, there's a bit of a learning curve to ordering this. You're probably gonna be better off talking with Granberg directly to make sure you get the right number of links and the right type of chain for your saw. But this is not included with the sawmill kit. You'll need to purchase this separately. You can do it at the same time and they'll ship it with your sawmill order. Uh, that should be about everything that's included. Uh, we can actually get started on putting everything together. Okay, the first thing that we're going to do is attach the on-off bar, which is this and this, to the thickness rails. And to do that, we're going to use this piece of plate. So we're going to put a carriage bolt on each side of the on-off bar. And this goes head down into the rail. And then we're going to uh, put the on-off plate here. It goes together just like that. Next, we're going to put a carriage bolt in each side of the thickness rails. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're going to put a carriage bolt head down on each of these. We can actually put three in there actually, so I'll put a third one in the other thickness rail too. I'm jumping ahead of myself just a tiny bit, but I can tell you this step will save you just a tiny bit of time. So. So there's three on that thickness rail. And let's go ahead and put a third one on this thickness rail. So now we're going to attach the on-off bar to the thickness rails. And then we're going to put a flat washer on both of the bolts on this side. And then we're going to actually put the handle on this side like this, and uh, we're going to use a coupling nut on the handle here, and a coupling nut on this one. But we're going to put a lock washer on this back bolt here, and then we're gonna put the coupling nut on top of that. And you can put those just finger tight. And then on the opposite side over here, we're going to put a locking washer and, or excuse me, a locking nut and a single coupling nut. Okay, so we're actually going to remove this flat washer here, so I apologize. This one's gonna go away and we're gonna replace him with a locking washer. And we're gonna put a coupling nut out here on the outside. And again, finger tight on that one. And then we're gonna go ahead and put a nylock 
uh, nut on this one here. And this is where the ratchet's gonna come in handy. This should be a half inch bolt. You could do this with the uh, bar wrench, but it's a little quicker with a ratchet. And we're gonna make that barely tight. Not really tight at all, just loose. Okay, next we're going to install the end brackets, which are these pieces here. And the orientation on these is pretty critical. You'll want to consult the instructions carefully. But with the handle oriented the way I have it here, the bracket to my left is going to have this small V facing away. And then on the other side, it's going to be facing the handle. So it's a real, a real important orientation step. You want to make sure to consult the directions on that one so you get it correct. So these were the carriage bolts that we installed earlier. And we're going to place those on the end there. And we're going to put a flat washer on both of those. And then we're going to put a nylock nut on each of these. And then uh, the next step is actually to flush the bracket with the end of the thickness rail and then to go ahead and tighten them down. So I'm gonna pull this toward the end here and make sure it's flush with the end of the thickness rail. And then we're gonna go ahead and tighten this down. And then the same thing on this side, we're gonna make sure it's flush. And the torque on these is 10 to 12 pounds, according to the, the bracket here, so it's not, not a ton. Those are lock nuts, so you shouldn't have to crank down on them. All right, and a couple of lock nuts. And again, the orientation on these end brackets is really important, uh, so just be sure to consult the instructions on that to make sure you have the right orientation. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and flush this up with the end of the thickness rail and tighten everything down. All right, good, so we've got our end brackets installed and now we're going to put on the handle. So this simply slides through this hole in the end bracket and continues all the way through until it's through this end bracket. So let's go ahead and do that now. It can be a little bit of a snug fit, so just be patient with it. It does, does slide through these holes. And then we'll want to attach it through this side too. And according to the instructions, you want this to be flush with the end of the end bracket. So uh, in this case, it might sound like it's flush with the mount here, but it needs to be flush with the end of the bracket here. And when you do that, it'll be flush on both sides. All right, so let's go ahead and attach the small bolt that cramps this down. And we're going to put that in this direction. Very good. So this is the small uh, pan head screw. And then there's a small nylock washer, or excuse me, nylock nut that attaches to that. We'll attach that in just a second. It's a 3 8 inch uh, nut. And then you'll use the standard screwdriver on your bar wrench. And we'll do that on both sides. Okay, so the basic frame is now put together for the sawmill, and now we're going to attach the, uh, these brackets on the end. So we'll assemble those first, and then we'll go ahead and attach them to the frame. So I'll set this to the side for just a second, and we'll get those things put together. Okay, so next we're gonna put together the guides here, and um, we need to put these together first before we attach them to the rail, as I said earlier. You can see that two of them have a guide on them and two of them don't. And so the two guided ones are going to stay together and the two non-guided ones are going to stay together. Let's put the non-guided ones together first. And the orientation here again is important. The markings on the side of this guide need to be on the outside of the sawmill. And so why that's important is we're going to put this bar guard on this and it needs to be oriented such that the markings are facing out toward the bar guard. The way this works, these are the shoes that actually pinch the bar. So in the end, these need to come together, just like that. You'll see that there's a bolt, or excuse me, a nut welded to the bottom of this. That's going to be used to attach everything. So we're going to use the, the bar guard here, and then this flat shoe, and this guide, and a couple of these. 
So we want to make sure that we put a washer on the top. So we'll slide a washer onto each one of these bolts. And then we're going to slide them through top here, top here. We're going to attach this to the bolts. And then this is going to slide down through those holes and then thread these bolts into those nuts. And finger tight is okay because later on you'll want to be able to slide the chainsaw through here and attach it. So when you're there, you're all done. But the other side with the guides, there's no bar guard obviously. This would be called the thrust end. Again, the shoe needs to be up and shoe needs to be down and Again, two washers, one on each bolt. We're gonna slide them through the top. And thread them into the nut. Very good, so these two are assembled. Now let's go ahead and put them on the frame. All right, so let's pull our frame back over here and we'll kind of orient everything this and then we can go ahead and start putting everything together so for this uh, installation we're going to use a few different pieces let's go over those so here we're going to use u-bolts these unique collars and then a variety of coupling and locking nuts and we're going to use these to install the guides here so let's go ahead and start with one guide and then we'll do the other one uh, the orientation again on this guide is really important the bar guard obviously needs to extend out past the end of the sawmill and you should have uh, this is based on the orientation of the handle itself in the center that you'd want to have this piece. Again, refer to the instructions if you're confused about which guide goes on which side of the sawmill. So we're going to use these collars and you're going to slide that on the U-bolt and then the U-bolt is going to go across the guide here and then it's going to hug the guide with that collar. And on the other side, we're going to use two flat washers, one on each side and one of the uh, nuts is going to be a locking nut and the other nut is going to be a coupling nut. One way to keep the U-bolt uh, straight is to go ahead and thread the coupling nut on almost all the way, which will keep the U-bolt aligned and then go ahead and lock down this locking nut. This is where the deep socket will come in handy. Uh, you can start with your regular socket if that's all you have and then finish with the bar wrench if that's all you have available. Um, you will bottom out your shallow socket on this bolt. And if you need to, you can finish that with the bar wrench. Perfect, so now we can move this up. We're gonna make this uh, three inches, which on the guide, is three inches here. We're gonna go ahead and set this to three inches. Finish locking it down. On this side, you want these guides to actually face the inside of the sawmill. And that means that the markings should be also facing the inside of the sawmill. So we'll do the same thing. We're going to attach our collar to the U-bolt, slide it around the neck of the guide and attach it with a lock nut and with a coupling nut. So I'm not sure if our kit didn't uh, come with the proper amount of nuts or not, but we don't have an additional lock nut for this side. So for now, we're gonna use another coupling nut. Uh, if that changes, we'll update the description in the video. If somehow or another we locate a nut that we're missing or something. Um, we've read the directions several times and we've not been able to locate that additional lock nut. So for now, we're going to attach with two coupling nuts here. And uh, again, if we find the proper nut or whatever, we'll, we'll update the description in the video. And we'll adjust this down to three inches and lock it in. Okay, very good. So the, everything's pretty much assembled, although not everything's been tightened down. Uh, the handle here is still adjustable, so we can actually move this to whatever distance we need to be comfortable along the thickness rails. 
So that's important there. Um, at this point, you can go ahead and tighten down this lock nut that's on the back side of the on-off bar and do any last tightening on all the hardware here. The only thing that you wouldn't want to tighten down would be where the saw bar goes. Um, of course, you want to do that once the saw is installed. Uh, they do include plastic plugs to go in the end of certain things, the handle and then the top of the guides here, they've got a plug for each of those. And then there's a plastic handle that's provided you can install on here. In fact, the instructions show that they recommend puncturing a hole in the end of the handle and putting your bar wrench in the end of the handle for storage. And the way this sawmill is designed is to adjust nearly everything with the bar wrench, which is excellent engineering. So very adjustable in the field. The only thing that you wouldn't really be able to adjust with the bar wrench would be the clamps that hold the handle on. And other than disassembling the chainsaw mill, I don't see why you would need to do that in the field other than maybe to tighten things down. So other than that, the bar wrench, of course, will do everything in the field, which just is a testament to the engineering on their sawmill. All right, so that completes the assembly of the Granberg Alaskan Chainsaw Mill. Um, I was impressed, actually. Initial impressions of how easy it was to assemble. I don't know why I had this exotic idea about how complicated it would be. But clearly, this product has evolved probably over 50 years, and so they've done a fantastic job. Um, as you know, this hot tub deck that's behind us, we actually created the lumber for that with our own DIY sawmill. And there's a reason that we're not sharing the plans for our sawmill because we really want to compare this with a proper sawmill and then do a proper comparison so that you can understand why we would not encourage a DIY sawmill. Granted, if you're a welder and an engineer and all that stuff, have a heyday. But for the average Joe who's out there just doing uh, projects around the property, so far, without cutting any lumber yet, I'm impressed with the quality of this sawmill. It feels very solid. And everything is very uh, very well thought out. Our DIY sawmill, it gets the job done, but it's definitely got some safety hazards and uh, has some risks associated with it. So anyway, the sawmill is complete. We look forward to doing numerous videos on this sawmill. Like I mentioned, we're going to hopefully compare it to our DIY model. We'll also talk a little bit about the ongoing maintenance, anything we find, tips and tricks, stuff like that. And of course, we'll share lots of Alaskan sawmill porn so you can indulge in that. If you enjoyed this video and you want to learn more about making your own lumber, chainsaw mills, timber framing, off-grid living, stuff like that, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll put a subscribe button right between the sawmill rails right here so that you can subscribe to the channel. And then also please follow us on our blog. It's purelivingforlife.com. Uh, we do a lot more in-depth posts over there. And then also we have a Facebook and an Instagram. If you enjoy those channels, we do a lot of micro posts. If you enjoy those, please follow us there and we'll see you in the next video.